Meg Stalter plays uh, Kayla on the second season of Hacks on HBO Max. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Meg, so nice to talk with you today. Um, we've never talked, uh, Gold Derby's never talked with you before. So I wanna go back to the origins of your involvement with Hacks. When you first saw those scripts for Kayla, what did you think of the character right off the bat? And um, you know, what did you think of the script? Cause it's such a unique and special project. Oh my God, I thought I absolutely have to get it. <laughs> I think um, when I saw the script, I was like, this is something that is so, not only so funny and important, but it was like, this is something that fits what I really wanna do and things that I've already kind of, I mean, Kayla is like, she's such a silly girl. <laughs> And it's such a character that I felt like was already inside of me. <laughs> and then the um, script is just so funny. And I think you you audition for so much, so many different things where you're like, okay, this is a great script, but it doesn't quite feel right. Or like, okay, this isn't really in my wheelhouse, but this was like the first thing that I auditioned for where I was like, I absolutely have to do anything I can to get it because it feels so meant to be. And then I met Paul at a stand-up show and I was um, such a big fan of him and we just really clicked and like had the best night ever in like this packed packed little tiny uh, room. Uh, this show was like f f so packed that we couldn't even watch everybody perform so we just hung out the whole night and it was it just feels like a match made in heaven. I'm, I'm so I feel like the luckiest girl in the world with a script it's so good. That's exactly what I wanted to ask you next, because I feel like Kayla is such a perfect role for you. So I wanted to know how much of that was already on the page? How much of that are you bringing to Kayla? But also now in season two, you know, how much are the writers continuing to write for your strengths? Because it really, it is such a perfect role. I mean, I, I am just so in love with Paul Lucci and Jen and like they, it was all on the page, but then they let me improvise. They let all of us like, oh, do you have any ideas for this one? Like, we're going to do a fun one or like we do it every single scene. But the script's already so good that I don't even remember what parts are improvised and what's on the page because it's all like so natural. So Kayla and Jimmy, like it's just so all there. But they also like do such a good job letting us like be wild <laughs> and add whatever, you know, like they're so up for collaborating and you just don't always get that. Like, it's just a really unique, I think they came from an improv background too. So it like makes sense. I mean, Paul is so good at improv that hotel scene in season one, we kept wanting to do over and over again, just because we were having so much fun, like adding things. Um, so they, it's really collaborative and it's, but it also, it's like a perfect script every time. So anytime I get a script, episode I'm like oh my god this is the funniest thing I've ever seen I can't wait to like do it and then they're like oh add what what do you want to do this time say something crazy <laughs> and then it's just yeah it's both <laughs> let's talk about that um that season one finale where you know Kayla books the honeymoon suite for her and Jimmy and is probably at the height of her inappropriate behavior for the workplace that we've seen so far um you know, I, I just want to kind of get into the character a bit and understand, like, what does Kayla actually think about Jimmy? Like, what kind of, um, she obviously, you know, likes working with him and wants to continue working with him. But what do you think Kayla thinks about Jimmy? I think she's really, really just his number one supporter and fan. I think he, she really loves him. But I don't think she always sees him in a, this sexual way. I think, like, we've talked about it a lot. And we think that Kayla probably decided that you know, 20 minutes before the hotel, you know, five minutes before the hotel, she was like, oh yeah, I think we'll hook up. Like, I don't think she's been in love with him in that way. I think she's, she thinks they're best friends. And I think like, there's just a lot of really sweet moments in season two that you get to see with them. And it just like their relationship keeps expanding and it's really special. I feel like you don't always get to see like these love stories between best friends. <laughs> and I know Jimmy doesn't consider Kayla a best friend, but I think Kayla really considers him like her best friend. I think he, she probably talks about him all the time. <laughs> yeah, there is, um, there are a lot of strong moments for Kayla in season two. And um, we won't spoil anything because nobody has seen it yet. Um, but one thing that I love about Kayla this season is we actually get to see a lot of her ambition. Um, you know, she, she's driven and there's a great episode where Kayla 
you know, is really kind of going above and beyond in the, in the right ways. Um, so can you talk about like, what, what do you think drives Kayla? You know, where does she want to go with, um, with her career and what, you know, what kind of drives her every day? I kind of think that like Kayla, you know, has money and comes from money and is just like trying to have a good time and have fun. But I think that what drives her is like truly her friendship with Jimmy, I guess. Like, I, I think that she's, the reason she wants to be ambitious is to kind of impress him. And like, even her, you know, like, I think in the beginning, it's like, oh, she's, you know, she's just having fun and she's doing the job for like, uh, as a hobby, she doesn't really need the money. But I think she loves him so much. She's really trying to impress him. And I think she really just like wants to be sort of this duo. <laughs> When she kind of, I think it is like her friendship with him because she doesn't really need the money or the power. She's kind of already like born into like some sort of power with her dad being, you know, this big boss at this agency. I think, um, yeah, her need to belong and feel like she has friends and like the sense of community she has with like the office. <laughs> Cause I don't think she was really in it for money or like cares about the power or anything. I think she's trying to have a good time. And then I think realizes that Jimmy's really important to her and wants to impress him. Yeah, I mean, whether Jimmy knows it or not, uh, you are already an iconic duo. Um, <laughs> so, so I wanna ask you about working with Paul, you know, you were mentioning earlier, you know, getting to know Paul, but your dynamic is so terrific on screen. And I have to imagine too that you're probably catching Paul off guard a lot with your delivery of these lines. I mean, he writes a lot of, you know, he writes a lot of the scripts, he writes these lines, He's no, he knows what's gonna happen. But I have to imagine when you're actually shooting and you get to go for it, you're probably constantly catching him by surprise. So what is it like working, especially on those one-on-one -on -one scenes that, that you have so often? Oh my God. I mean, he, I've just, I was such a fan of him in Broad City. Like it's a dream to get to work with him at all, let alone be like this like silly duo. And I truly like, it's really hard not to break when he does certain faces or like he surprises me all the time. Like he's the funniest person in the world. So I truly have the best time, especially in those like, I mean, there's some days where it's all just me and him because we do so much together and he just always, it doesn't matter how long we've been doing it that day. He makes me laugh every scene. It's so, he's so good. And it's such a sweet like pairing too. Like there's a lot of sweetness to an innocence as much as like the hotel seems so funny their friendship's pretty innocent and sweet. Like she just wants him to be like, I think her dream is for him, Jimmy, to be like, you're my best friend. <laughs> well, maybe, we'll maybe we'll get there. Maybe by the end of the season, <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> I, I wanna ask you too about, we get a little bit of a glimpse. This is a bit of a tease for season two. We get a little bit of a glimpse of Kayla's family. Um, so when you read those scripts, like what, what were you, how did you imagine her, her family to be? And then, you know, I don't know if you've seen the episode, but, you know, did your kind of expectation of her family line up with uh, what what was written? Yeah, I think her dad makes perfect sense. <laughs> like, I think that, like, there's something, again, like, sexual <laughs> about the, the, not to give anything away, but I think that her dad, it's just like, they are similar yet so different. You know, I think there's something like the way he talks about the mom, there's just some like, there's like some, they both, I think, want people to think they're having a lot of sex. <laughs> uh, and then power, I think, um, with the dad. I don't think Kayla cares about power, but I think like, because she has already always had it. So I don't think it matters. But yeah, I think she's a daddy's girl. <laughs> and I think her dad is the sexual guy with the mom, not with Kayla, but um, <laughs> I think they both are cut from the same cloth. She's a daddy's girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the family resemblance is the family resemblance is there. That's for sure. <laughs> the family uh, resemblance is there. I think they care about different things, but without giving too much away, I think they both have a flirty side, and I think they both know that they have power. And I think they they're re the, I think the way they tease Jimmy is different, but yet similar. Yeah. I wanna ask you too about working with Jean Smart. Um, Kayla doesn't share a lot of scenes with Deborah, but whenever she does, they're always incredibly memorable. Um, so I want, and I wanted to ask you too, 
you know, what do you think Kayla thinks of Deborah if she thinks about Deborah at all? Like, you know, we don't even know, you know, if she, if she has any kind of conception of like who Deborah Vance is, but you know, what do you think Kayla thinks about Deborah and what is it like to work with, with Jean Smart when you get the chance? I think there's just nobody as glamorous as Jean Smart. She is just, I'm, I'm in love with her, I truly. She's so regal and so sweet and kind to all of us. And she's just absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I think that Kayla thinks, I think she has a real like, you go girl <laughs> attitude towards Deborah. And I think like, I think she's pretty wrapped up in her own life, but I do think that she's kind of like, I think that a lot of people are intimidated by Deborah, but I don't think Kayla is. She's kind of like, Hey girl, just, you know, you're another client. Like, how are you? How the hell are you? Sort of energy. I don't think she can, she's like wrapped her mind around like, oh, this is like a famous <laughs> comedian. I think it's like, oh, it's another person we work with. Like, let's go to lunch. I think she's not really intimidated, but she does like, it's, she's like, likes her a lot. <laughs> I think yeah. she definitely like has probably invited her to go like shopping and Deborah's probably been like, what, you, what the hell is wrong with you? That should be an episode. Um, <laughs> they go shopping. <laughs> and it's a perfect segue into my next question, which is about Kayla's wardrobe. I mean, number one, how does that help you find the character? Because I have to imagine those clothes really, as soon as you put them on, you kind of in that headspace. And also how much input do you have on, on what Kayla wears? I just love every single thing they've ever picked out for her to wear. Like I, there's not one thing in a fitting where I've been like, oh, I don't, I, I mean, I think there's been certain things we've all been like, oh, I don't think she'd wear that. But I think that it's all been beautiful clothes. Like I think she, I think she's sort of a fashionista. <laughs> I think she has like this funky style and I, I think like it really does make you get into character when you're wearing like something like I don't know she's very stylish but it's definitely things different they're different than I would wear but in um there every time I pick out a new outfit I'm like I would wear this is this who I am now you know what I mean it's like <laughs> yeah. things I would never pick out and then once I have them on I'm like I need to wear this every day <laughs> um and finally before I let you go um, since nobody has seen season two yet, um, can you kind of tease our audience on what is your favorite episode of the season and what kind of moments of Kayla should they look out for? Because everybody's a huge fan of Kayla and they can't wait to see what Kayla does next. I will say without saying anything that I think there's like some sentimental sweet moments with them that I really am looking forward to seeing and having people react to. I think there's, you just get to see like some different sides of her. Cause I think she is really sweet and like means well. <laughs> and I'm excited to like show that side. And like, I just think it's, Jimmy and Kayla is really sweet together. Agreed. Um, well, Meg Stalter, congratulations on Hack season two. And thanks so much for talking to Gold Derby. Thank you for talking to me. <laughs>